Welcome to Level Up Mechanics, and in today's video, we'll be doing the second round of sound system upgrades on the 8th gen Honda Civic. If you haven't checked out the first video in regards to the Sony head unit, I'll make sure to provide a link of that video in the description section below. But in this video, we're going to be upgrading the factory speakers to some Pioneer A-Series 6.5 inch three-way coaxial speakers. So here are the speakers that we're going to be installing today onto the Honda Civic. Um, my particular Honda Civic only has four speakers. We have two front door speakers and two rear speakers on the deck lid behind the rear seats. Um, they're really easy to install. All four speakers are going to be the exact same. They're six and a half inch coaxial speakers. Um, in addition to these four speakers, we're also going to be installing these speaker connectors. All of these items I did purchase on Amazon, so if you're interested, check out the links in the description section below. These speakers are more of the middle of the range as far as cost is concerned, but it should improve the sound quality of my speakers with the new head unit that I installed on the Civic. In order to install these speakers onto the Civic, there are gonna be some tools that you'll need as we're going to have to modify how these speakers are actually bolted onto the vehicle. Um, you will need to drill some holes, uh, so we'll, I'll walk you through that process. But as far as the tools are concerned, you'll want a trim removal tool, um, a flashlight, um, pocket screwdriver, favorite tool some sort of marker like a permanent marker to make any markings that you need you're also going to need a drill bit I believe this is a 1 8 of an inch I do also have this little right angle attachment that I use with my impact driver and a Phillips screwdriver insert then I have my Phillips screwdriver adapter um, for my impact driver an electric drill um, extra battery and an impact driver with an 8 millimeter socket so you can use a ratchet impact driver whatever suits your needs here again we have our connector adapters for the speakers so they can plug up to the factory connectors from honda miscellaneous screws and washers that we'll need uh, these speakers do come with extra uh, speaker wire so if you want to just tap into the speaker wire itself and not use these connectors you can do so however I want to use the connectors because if I do any modifications in the future or upgrade anything, it's plug and play versus having to do electrical work. Here are the speakers and we have the cover faceplate that we're not going to use because the door panels and the trim on the Civic are just going to naturally cover the speakers themselves. In addition to the speaker, it does come with this universal bracket adapter and I'm going to show you what we need to do with this adapter to make it work for the Civic. So in order to mount the speakers onto the Civic, you are going to need to use this universal bracket adapter. And uh, for our purposes, we're going to get rid of all of the little ear tabs on this universal bracket adapter. The great thing is that they are pre-cut with these grooves for each tab. So all you really have to do is snap off the tabs that you don't want to use. And for our application, we're gonna snap everything off. So it's just one big circle. Oh, I also forgot you are gonna need some sort of tape in order to hold these bracket adapters into place on the body of the vehicle, wherever you're installing them. It just makes it easier when you're ready to drill holes. And here is the second bracket adapter ready for us to use on the vehicle. All right, so in order to remove the door panel from the door, you're gonna open up your inner handle right here and there will be an actual uh, cover for one of the screws. And you'll just use a pocket screwdriver in order to take the cover out. Afterwards, you'll have both a screw on the back side right here and you're also going to have a little plastic retaining clip on one edge of the corner over here. So for the plastic retaining clip, we're just gonna pop in the center so it can be loose. 
Sometimes these little plastic retaining clips are hard to get out with a tool. So as long as you pop in the center, you can actually just take the door panel out with the clip and then the clip will fall out and it makes it a little easier rather than trying to dig it out uh, of its spot. But then you're also going to have this screw right here. Um, looks like you can do it with the door handle closed. There's the screw. You're also going to want to remove the trim that holds the window switch and the door lock switch. As you can see down here, there's an actual little cutout. There's a little notch down here so that you can actually pry up the trim piece and uh, remove the trim piece. Um, you could also just use sheer force and pull up and back a little. And now we have the actual window switch trim piece disconnected and we will just unplug the connector. Once you have that trim piece up, there's gonna be another screw down here that holds the door panel in place. And now we're ready to pop off the door panel from the door. So in order to pop off the door panel from the door, it's just held in by a whole bunch of clips surrounding the door panel. And so what I like to do is just brace the upper part of the door by the window and sort of give it a tug in order to release the panel from the door. Now you don't want to pull this off all the way. We're just going to need to lift up slightly. And as you can see, that little plastic piece that I was talking about by the inner door handle popped out by itself. Now that we have it disconnected, we're gonna have a couple cables for the inner door handle and the door lock on the other side over here. Uh, and we're gonna need to disconnect those in order to remove the door panel completely. Technically, if you want to keep these cables attached, you can do so, just be very careful as you place the door panel off to the side to give you room towards the speaker area. I'm just removing the cables uh, so that way we can get a better view of the actual speaker and how to mount it onto the door. So here's the close-up of the OEM speaker on the passenger front door. It's going to be pretty much identical to the driver's side. And what we'll need to do is remove this 8mm bolt right here. And it's just held in by one bolt. It may have some weather adhesive or sealant on the back side. You'll just want to use some sort of tool to actually help pry the speaker off. Lift up and pull out. So here on the back side we have our actual speaker connector with the OEM harness. We'll just sort of pinch on each side order to release the connector. Next thing you'll want to do is actually remove this hardware up here since we're not going to be needing it and it will be in the way. Um, it's just held in by some tabs, one on each side. You just sort of press the tab in and push the hardware back. Now comes the fun part of actually installing the adapter into the stock location with the speaker. And in order to do this, going to sort of need to do your best to center the bracket around the hole for the OEM speakers and then you'll want to use some tape in order to hold the bracket in place so we can drill the necessary holes uh, in order to bolt this adapter up to the door. Here you can see I've taped up where I want to place the bracket onto the actual door frame itself. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill three holes. Now there's a hole up here uh, from that hardware that we removed for the OEM speaker. I'm not going to use that because it's a big rectangle. I'm going to make a hole and drill right here, right here, and in the middle on the bottom right here. So I'm going to drill three holes and then I'll run in three long screws that were included with the speaker kit. bracket is secured onto the door. We can remove the masking tape 
and you want to make sure to remove any of the metal shavings that were created during the drilling process uh, since the speaker is magnetized you don't want those metal shavings touching the back of the speaker at all all right so now we're ready to install the speaker onto the bracket and in order to do so first things first you will want to connect the connector um, on the back side right here and then connect the uh, wire harness adapter onto the actual speaker itself. I am installing the speaker upside down because where the connectors are on the speaker, it just sort of sits in this natural groove on the door uh, and makes it easier as far as clearance is concerned. So we'll just pre-start one small screw on the bracket just to make it easier to install the speaker onto the bracket. Sort of helps line it up into place and then we can just tighten the screw all the way down once you have it lined up or at least enough to to hold it in place and then we'll add three additional screws to hold the speaker to the bracket That's it. The speaker is now installed onto the door and is secured. It's connected to the wire harness. Uh, so we are done installing the speaker. I just need to put the door panel back on and we're done with the front door. Next up, we're going to do the rear deck lid uh, behind the rear seats for the rear speaker. So as far as the rear speakers are concerned, first step, remove Snorlax. We're going to need to move this headrest out of the way now on the sedans it's really easy to get to the speakers because all you have to do is pop open the speaker grill on the coupes it's a little different i think you have to take out the whole rear deck lid so since mine's a sedan all i'm going to need to do is pop out this rear speaker grill. In order to do that, I'm going to take my handy dandy pocket screwdriver and just start lifting up. There we go. Now, as you can see, if we come in closer, here is my speaker. This one has definitely seen better days. It is dead. So we're gonna just do the same thing. Remove the eight millimeter bolt up here. Uh, you may have to pry it a little bit in order to release the weather seal or weather stripping on the back side, and it will just come right out and we'll unplug it uh, from the car. And just like the front speakers, we're gonna need to remove this hardware right here. So now that everything's removed, we're gonna do the same process. We're gonna put our bracket up here. We're gonna tape it in place to hold it in position. Uh, we're gonna angle it the way we want. So when we make the holes, they go through the body of the vehicle. It is gonna be a little different drilling though, since we don't have a lot of space because of the rear windshield. I'm going to have to actually get into the trunk and drill upside down. So metal shavings will come out. Use protective eyewear when doing this so metal shavings don't go into your eye. If you are curious, here is the finished product on the driver's side just for reference on how everything looks. But let's go ahead and start setting up the passenger side. All right, so now that I've got the bracket uh, roughly where I want it to be installed, now I'm going to crawl into the trunk and sort of drill my holes from the backside. It's going to be a little difficult to actually make the drills from the other end since you're not seeing where the holes really are for the bracket. So what I would recommend is I would recommend actually marking the location of the holes roughly using some permanent marker on the body. I'd make a marking on the side of where you want your hole to line up and then uh, follow that marking onto the back side inside the trunk 
and you'll be able to sort of line up where you need to drill the hole from underneath. I'd also suggest drilling one hole at a time, uh, pre-drilling the holes out on the bracket itself and just sort of lining up the hole one hole at a time uh, because it'll give you a little bit of wiggle room for air. So now that I have my holes drilled, I'm going to take my three long screws and start placing them where they need to go. And I'm gonna take my impact driver with my little right angle adapter and a Phillips screwdriver adapter and start running the screws into place. bracket is now secured onto the body at the rear deck location. I can remove my masking tape and now I can install the speaker onto the bracket. Alright, so I'm going to take my connector and connect it to the speaker. Here we go. Now place my speaker and position it where I want it. Be right about there. And I'm gonna place four small screws to hold the speaker onto the bracket. Speaker is properly secured, plugged in, ready to go. That's going to do it for the speakers on the passenger side. Uh, you just repeat all of the steps for the driver side and you'll have the four main speakers replaced on the Honda Civic. That's gonna do it for this video. Again, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Don't forget to like if you thought the video was helpful and make sure to subscribe if you wanna see future upgrades that I perform on the 8th Gen Honda Civic. I appreciate your time and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.